Will Orion and the New Gods steal away the newest addition to Clark Kent's family? Well, let's hop into the pages of Action Comics number 1049 and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join the book, we pick back up with Metallo. You'll remember that Lex Luthor was trying to do everything in his power to coerce John Corbin to come and work for him, including giving him a brand new robotic body. Corbin didn't want the damn thing, being strong and resolute in the idea that he'd rather die than work for Lex Luthor, and of course, this brand new body comes with catches. Like, for one, whenever Lex wants, he can just kind of hologram in and talk to John, which is pretty damn annoying for this man. When bribery and coercion didn't work, Lex Luthor decided to move to threat, saying, all right, Metallo, work for me, help me destroy Superman and his family, or I'll kill you. Metallo literally says that he'd kill himself first. But of course, Lex Luthor didn't join the 1% without having at least one or two trump cards up his sleeve. In this case, it's John's poor sister, who Lex has framed on a murder rap. That means poor John is going to have to break out of jail and go work for Lex if he doesn't want his sister suffering a fate much worse than his own current one. Now where is Superman while all of this is going on? Well, he's still fighting that battle against the new gods at the zoo. Orion and the others had come to take away Osul, one of the brand new Falasian twins that Superman had brought back to Earth, fearing that his connection to the fire of Olgrim makes him far too dangerous to live on Earth. Superman being Superman is very quick to call out the new gods on all their different levels of hypocrisy. Yeah, you know what? They said I I was once too powerful to live on planet Earth, and look how I turned out. Also, hey, Orion, your family history reads like a goddamn Greek tragedy. You were raised on a planet filled with superpowered people, and all you new gods do is fight in war with each other. While Superman fights the new god threats, Lois, Bibbo, and the other actually go out of their way to try and save the everyday people who are getting crushed under the rubble of this battle. Bibbo, once again proving to be the very best that humanity has to offer, tells the children to just do what Superman would do in this situation, and that is, well, do whatever they can to help people, and they do. Osul especially gets a super awesome hero moment by literally holding up the roof, allowing everyone else under them to escape. Unfortunately, doing so gives away his position to Dasad, Apocalypse's chief torturer, and basically a black belt when it comes to snatching children, let's face it. It's here, though, when his life is in danger, though, Osul proves that he's more than just a Kryptonian offshoot. The power of Olgrim ends up activating inside him, and at once, everyone can actually hear the voice of the oldest god of gods. Understandably, the kid is pretty damn scared now that he knows he has such amazing and potentially destructive power inside him, but Superman proves to be the best teacher in this situation, saying, hey, amazing power doesn't define you, you define what it means to have amazing power. So right around here, Orion and the other new gods begrudgingly accept the fact that they're not going to win this fight, and they're not going to be able to take the kid back with them, not today at least. Before they go, though, Orion does make a very frightening declaration to Superman, saying anything bad that happens to this kid from here on out, all of that blood is on the Man of Steel's hands. And that if the kid won't come willingly for the betterment of his power, then they're just going to have to find a way to divorce the power from the kid. Now, believe it or not, we're not done yet. With that crisis averted, Superman goes to handle the other piece of business that he was involved in before all of this broke out, that of course being the future fate of Warworld. The slaves are free, and Superman has been working with the Galactic UN to make sure they all have homes to go home to, but that being said, some of them are choosing not to leave, though. For some, Warworld is the only planet they've ever known. They fought and died and bled to overthrow Mongol, and because of that, they want to actually try and make it a planet worth living on, and honestly, this warms Superman's heart. He says, from this point forward, the people of Warworld and the House of El are always going to be tied. Superman knows a thing or two about starting over on a brand new planet. He knows how scary it can be, but he also believes that the people of Warworld world will do well, and because of that, he wants to give them a gift. Much like how his own mother wrapped him in a blanket before sending him to planet Earth, Superman wants to give the people of War World the gift of the House of El symbol, something that they can take as their own. A symbol to show that they too are all family. Now that certainly is showing the happier, more positive side of family, but don't you know that there's a darker side too, like poor John Corbin who is forced to escape from jail if it means saving his sister. On his way out, though, he's sure to drop some cryptic clues to his favorite night guard before being forced to clobber him. Now, as the comic winds down, we actually answer the question that was posed a few issues ago, and that is, hey, how was Lex able to know about all the amazing technology on Warworld? Did he have a mole inside Superman's own camp? And the answer is yes, yes, he did. It would seem that Manchester Black of Superman's authority team that went with him to fight on Warworld has actually been 
informing on the Man of Steel and his comings and goings this whole time. He was so good at the ruse, too, even Lex had thought for a few seconds there that Manchester had ended up actually mending his evil ways. Though, as we see when Manchester Black tries to turn away from Lex, he gets shocked, implying that Luthor has some sort of contingency in place to keep Black on his side, even if he doesn't want as the comic ends. And so that was Action Comics issue number 1049, everybody, and once again, I gotta say, Philip Kennedy Johnson has really hit his stride in this book. It's so cool to see Superman be a father figure and a mentor, not just to this aw soul kid, but to all of the peoples of War World who are now free thanks to him. I like that with just a few tweaks here and there, Orion and the New Gods actually end up becoming pretty damn interesting and pretty compelling villains for Superman to fight. This is also probably some of my favorite Lex Luthor material I've seen in a long time. He's not trying to take over the world or infiltrate the multiverse, he's just screwing with Superman and he doesn't care who else he hurts along the way. It's classic original recipe Lex Luthor in a series that really does feel like back to basic Superman stuff and you know what? It feels so good which is why I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Hey there everyone, Kate Joel again and I just want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me and hey, if you enjoyed the book I covered in this issue and want some comics of your own, might I recommend Book Depository? It's my number one place for shopping for comic book trades. You get a great price and if you use my link down in the description, you'll actually be helping me out at the same time. You get something, I get something, everybody wins, right? So until next time everyone, I've been Joel and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye